What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Today we're going to be looking into how to get vocals to sit right in the mix. What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Today I'm going to be trying to go over one of the most requested subjects um, in the comments and on my Twitter. Is, um, you know, a lot of people want to know how to mix vocals and, um, you know, get them right to sit in the mix. And um, so I'm assuming that that's coming from a lot of you guys that are rapping um, you know, got Studio One and you're trying to mix on your own beats or, or um, you know a uh, different uh um mp3s or whatever that you're downloading so i wanted to start out um just by you know just by kind of um giving some perspective especially especially to the younger guys who are who are only know recording music as far as um you know doing doing shit on the computer um like back in way back in in 1998 when uh when i thought i was going to be the best rapper in the world this is what i got this machine right here this was the studio and i promise you i was the fucking man in the neighborhood because i had this guy right here this shit enabled us to make a song on a on a cassette tape now the way that this thing works is you can't even play this you can't even play this in the car or on a stereo like you had to you had to bounce this this audio out onto another tape deck so we'll play regular because what these four tracks would do is you could you could record enable any one of them and it kind of split the actual tape um into four different segments and you know that's how that's how you got your track so you had a you had a high shelf you had you had a mid bell and you had a low shelf and that that was your eq um, you had your gain knobs and then you had your volume fader and like what I would do is I'd get like a uh, you know a whole a whole shitload of uh, of mp3s off of Napster you know what I mean get old uh, you know Wu-Tang mp3s and Mob Deep mp3s and just whatever kind of whatever instrumental I could possibly find and then you record it to track one which was crazy because these are all mono channels, right? So I'm recording the beat in mono. And then this would be this would be my verse. This would be the double of my verse. And then this would be this would be like my ad libs in the background. And you know, I'd be doing this with, you know, two or three people from school at a time. You know, we skip school, you know, and uh get on this thing. I'd keep it in my car with like the mic stand and the mic and everything. And um Every time someone new came on, I would have to manually like turn this down a little bit, turn this one down. Oh, this guy always has his ad libs crazy loud, you know, so you, you would have to like physically perform a mix on this. And the point is, what I'm getting at is the the tapes that we would make. You know what I mean? Like this is the, the this is what we were bouncing down. We were dubbing the tapes ourselves and we were we were selling the shit in school, you know this is this is like high school vibes right um you know eventually by the time by the time i got out of school i figured out how to uh you know how to how to get it onto a you know onto a cd you know and do the printing and stuff like that and, and trying to put music push music like that and when you when you come from a perspective like this and you actually have to do this much work you can really have an appreciation and that's why i'm telling you the story so so maybe you guys could have an appreciation for how easy it is now to get something that sounds good because because yo like i promise you like the songs that we were making off of this like they were like they were playing them at house parties like we, like we were dancing to this shit you know what i mean and it sounded it, it sounded like trash like there was a high hiss from from the noise floor that was in the background you know but it was it was all about it was all about the vibe of the music so it's amazing to me that so many people can have can have access to um you know a semi clean signal chain 
so easily like w w with 200 bucks you could get a decent signal chain and you could still sit there and say like i can't make the music it doesn't sound good like what the fuck are you talking about man like like you could make you could make a decent album on an iphone if if you have the creativity and the drive and the stuff that i'm getting that i'm getting ready to show you right now um, you know, I don't like to, I don't like to put things in, uh, you know, in terms of like the whole, maybe this isn't for you type of deal. But when you're talking about engineering and you're talking about manipulating audio, it, it really isn't something that every, that everybody could do. It's not sometimes, you know, sometimes you just, if you're an artist, you just, you just need to be an artist and, and find somebody who, you know, who can, who can do the engineering for you. You know, if you're a producer, maybe you shouldn't be, maybe you shouldn't be a vocalist. If you're a vocalist, maybe you shouldn't be trying to pr produce. And some people are so talented that they could do it all. The, what I'm getting at here is, excuse me, what I'm getting at here is in order, in order to mix and in order to understand like the stuff that I'm getting ready to tell you is you have to have a, you have to have, um, God, how can I explain it? It's so it's so fucking weird to to even try to explain. You have to be able you have to be able to see sound in some capacity. You have to be able to close your eyes and literally see the layers of the sound and then depending on like when I when I first when I first realized that 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 I could potentially be a decent mixer was when I would I, I would sit in my room with this thing and I'd have my finger on this on this fader and I could I could hear things going you know forward and back and I could hear my voice going in front of the horns on the uh, on the Releasio Delph instrumental or pulling them behind those horns I could see it in my head that's when I knew that that this was something that that I like to do and something that I was probably never going to stop doing because it made sense with the weird way that I think if you don't have experiences like that, you're not going to want to waste a lot of time trying to learn how to do this because you're you're never going to be it, none of this. None of this is going to make any sense to you. It's going to it's just going to sound like a bunch of weirdness. So with that being said, I have. A session that that's brought up and uh let's just let's just listen to what i have first Cause you mind it, that's a hell of a cologne When I step out, all the bitches smell it on me Cause your money, that's a hell of a cologne Walk into the spot, your bitch, you smell it on me Cause your money, that's a hell of a cologne When I step out, all the bitches smell it on me Cause your money, that's a hell of a cologne Walk into the spot, your bitch, you smell it on me Situation is different. You know, I always see me conduct myself like a gangster. Cushion blue hunters, you know I got it all. When I step on the spot, they know they know me. Cushion money, that's a hell. Alright, so I picked this, I picked this song um for a couple for like three or four reasons actually the main one is because it isn't a perfect vocal it's probably something that a lot of you guys are, are, are going to be dealing with like you'll hear once i once i solo this vocal the, the, the you can hear his kid in the background um <clears throat> this this is recorded this is recorded at, uh at my the artist's name is fulion his um it's recorded at his house, at his apartment. Um, it's not, you know, a treated room. Uh, there's no, there's no Oralex on the wall. There's no hustle and flow uh, egg crates on the wall or nothing like that. It's just a regular, just a regular apartment. Um, I'm pretty sure it's it's uh, it's uh, his. It's set up in, in on a desk in the in between the living room and the dining room. I think. Um, 
you know, just a common area that, so the point is to say that it's not an ideal condition. Um, what he does have though, is he has a decent chain. Um, this is a guy that I like, this is a guy that I support. Um, so I, I, um, you know, my company has a, uh, has a preamp and, and a mic set up, um, that we got as a trade for doing it for doing another job with a different vocalist and it's a it's a road nt1a um not a crazy expensive mic you know you talk about a, a 270 dollar mic and um and the presonus channel strip preamp um so when you're mixing vocals the first thing you know um in order to get a good mix is you got to have a good chain coming in you can't just you can't you can't just buy like a blue bottle and plug it into the back of you know an, an m audio mobile pre and then wonder why your mix your vocal sounds thin your vocal sounds thin is because you're not heating it up with a preamp so if you're if you're at a point where you just hate the way your vocal sounds you just can't stand it um you probably should get you know a preamp um i recommend the focus right isa1 um that's actually what i run my sm57 through to do these tutorials it's uh very overpowered for that purpose but i don't record vocals in you know in my project studio anymore because it's my least favorite thing to do so you know i get to use it and then i have the focus right channel strip that you know i use with artists when i when i go and i do have to do a vocal uh session and the reason why i like that is because it's a more than decent preamp it's not super expensive it's got a compressor and and and, and a pretty glossy eq on there and um it just makes things easy so getting into the actual vocal what we have here in, uh, in the hook or the other reason why why i picked this vocal is because um, there's two different sections of the beat. You have the section that's just kind of like the piano solo and the drums. So you kind of will kind of get to uh, understand um, mixing that type of deal. And then there's the section with, you know, the synth and the 808. Um, just listening, when I get a vocal um, back from these guys, the way, the way that we work is he has a, he has a copy of Studio One. I sent him the MP3 of my beat. Um, he records. He records over it. You know, just you know, drops his freestyles or whatever. You know, most of his stuff is all is all off the top, and then and then I'll just go ahead and um, you know mix it and kind of arrange it a little bit and put it more into song format, um, which is one of the big reasons why I like working with him because there's a. Uh, you know, there's a decent amount of creativity that I get to use on my part. Um, so the first thing that I'll do when I get stuff back from him is, um, you know, obviously I organize um, the the vocal parts. Um, you know, I'll have a I have the hook as one part, the verse and the different verses as another part. Then off of that, I will, you know, I'll take the hook. Hi, you know, highlight it and right click and add bus for selected tracks. That's going to that's going to give me that's going to give me a hook bus, and then I send that to my filter bypass. Um, I'm not gonna go back over how to you know how to set up buses and stuff like that. If you guys want to check out my uh, my mixing template plate tutorial, it'll tell you how to set this thing up. Um, then I just do the same thing for the verse. I make sure that I label the tracks so that, you know, shit doesn't get weird. Add bus for selected tracks. Just rename it verse one. Same thing here. Just click on click on one, press shift. Click on add bus for selected tracks, and that's gonna give me verse two. Um the next thing that I'll do is I'll just go into the hook section and i'll listen to what i got now let me just go ahead and take all of these plugins off so we could kind of hear what we have first Cushion money, that's a hell of a color. When I step out, all the bitches smell it. Don't smell it. 
cushion money, that's a hell of a cologne. Walk into the spot, your bitch, she smell it on me. Cushion money, that's a hell of a cologne. When I step out, all the bitches smell it on me. Cushion money, that's a hell of a cologne. Walk into the spot, your bitch, she smell it on me. So off rip, you know, I don't hear, I don't hear anything weird. I hear, I don't hear any clicks and pops or any crazy type of static or nothing that jumps out at me is something that I have to instantly correct. So that's a good thing. Um, the next thing that I'll go into is, you know, I'll look at, uh, I'll look at the, uh, the type of, the kind of priority of volume that I'm going to have over this, um, over this section. I, you know, I see that there's that there's three late that there's three main um, tracks, and then he's got he's got like uh, these kind of hype these kind of hype up ad libs, and then a real ad lib track on the bottom. So when when I get this, I um, a situation like this, it, I usually get pretty um, pretty excited because this means it's gonna be pre pretty easy um, because I have I'll just pan the dubs of the hook left and right i have one coming down the center as a main anchor um these ad libs you see that he kind of did the same thing on on each one of them um which is good that means that i could pan one left and one right and it's not going to sound really weird and then this i could keep coming straight down the middle and um when you get that you get you get a little bit you get it well you actually do get a bigger sound cushion money that's a hell of a cologne when i step out all the bitches smell it on me cushion money that's a hell of a cologne walk into the spot your bitch she smell it on me cushion money that's so instantly you you could hear it's more spaced out there's the by panning it you can you kind of get a definition in between all the voices and that and that is going to give it a um a thicker sound the next thing that i go ahead and do is i add a um i add an eq and i just i roll off all the lows on um excuse me i roll off all the lows on uh on the voice you have um the it's like the easiest place to get mud in a vocal is the is at the low end you don't have um you have a lot of use for cushion money that's a hell of a cologne you don't have a lot of use for stuff down here on a male vocal like you can cut um like this is a real aggressive cut um pretty much like the safe bet that a lot of pro audio guys will tell you is you know never go higher than than 80 hertz um but for my taste and for what i heard on on this mic setup um around 120 worked for for this vocal cushion money that's a hell of a cologne when i step out all the bitches smell it on me cushion money that's a hell of a cologne and then you know once i find that i'll just go ahead and add that to every track just so just so i'm not because when you add this many layers together and they're all saying the same thing you're gonna wind up getting um getting a lot of uh built up frequencies in the bottom of your vocal that is you know it's gonna leave uh you know like this undesirable rumble and it's going to it's it, that's going to start making everything sounding less clear so that's the first thing you want to do when you're when you're working with your vocal is really is really um really clean up that low end and um and you know and get your panning right so once you clean up your low end and you get your panning right you can kind of bring in the rest of, the rest of the instruments now i already mixed this track so you know i've I've kind of made all my eq tweaks i could i could kind of go back and off of memory and show you what i did but mo chances are if um you know if you're a producer you're gonna already have like a pre-mix of the track you're just gonna wind up flying the vocals in and and doing small tweaks which is um which is ideal um so we'll go ahead 
and kind of and kind of bring everything in and I'll show you why I did the processing that I did on the on the vocals. Now, when you hear that right there, it's it, it sounds good. It sounds like really almost all you really need to do is turn it up. So, um, you know, we we can start with that. You know, I just I, I take the mix tool and uh, turn up the lead a little bit. But I wanted I wanted to get a little bit more volume, so um, I went and hit it with Arvox. Uh, this plugin right here, if you don't have any Waves plugins, and uh, you're gonna be mixing a decent amount of vocals, just go ahead and get this plugin. I it's usually like um, Waves is always always has it on sale. You can you can most you can get it for thirty bucks sometimes. Um, if you can't get it for thirty bucks, the sixty or seventy dollars that it costs to get this plugin. I know it's an old looking plugin, but this thing has been used on so many hits. So many hit records. I mean, ridiculous. And it's super easy to use. It's it's a compressor. They've already uh they've already taken the attack and the release time for you. And all you gotta do is is use this threshold and it's just it's nice. Um the thing about compression with this chain is um I don't know if you could tell, but if you look at uh if you actually look at the waves, the vocal is already like very aggressively per, uh, compressed coming out of, um, you know, coming out of that preamp. Um, and uh, I like that because it because it makes it may it makes it I feel like it makes it easier for me to do my thing. Some people, you know, some people are insecure and they, you know, they don't want to compress before they get into the computer. They want to be able to undo everything. Um, I just like, I don't know. I just like to have, you know, just do it and, um, you know, give me something to work with and I'll do the best I can with it. Um, so you'll see that you'll see like it, it, the way you could tell that it's super compressed is there's only one real super high transient. Everything else is pretty tamed. Um, to get a, an even more thick in your face sound like this is really obnoxious. This is, this is something that I don't think, um, you know, if you guys are watching this and you're in audio school, like you're probably going to think this is, this is dumb, but it just sounded good, you know? And, and sometimes you just, you just do the shit that sounds good. So I hit it, I, I hit it with, um, you know, this, this lead part with Arvox and just, you know, brought it down 8.9. And you'll see the gain reduction on it and hear the sound. So I just like I just like the way that it kind of it kind of pulled this um, a little bit more to the front which is which is what I wanted to do before actually before actually doing the last stage of compression cuz I like to compress in stages whether it's uh you know what you know whether it's the you know the main bus or drums or you know if I'm going to use compression at all I I do it with two or three different compressors um so the next stage of compression is after you know I've got everything at the bus and um, I'm wanting I'm wanting to get more volume out of this, but I'm also wanting to have the uh, have these background ad libs. You know, uh, there's some cool stuff going on in here. Hello, I know they smell it. That's a hell of a cologne. I know she smell it over. You guys heard the baby in the background? 
That's a hell of a cologne. <laughs> yeah, see, shit, stuff like that. Like, you know, if if you were if you were super obsessive, and um, you know, you wanted to make a, a super clean sterile mix, you could go in here and you know put a gate or cut that shit out. But um, for this, for what I do with this guy, like it, it's street music, and I actually I actually think it's cool that uh, that you could hear his son hanging out in the background. Um. So I just leave it, and you can't you can't, you can't really discern it when you're listening when you're listening to it over the beat. So, you know, um, you know if you're doing if if you know if you just want to save time, whatever, bro. You know, that's how that's how I look at it. Um, anyway, so I want to hear these more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna is I'm gonna compress the hook bus in order to kind of glue everything together. And by glue everything together, it's make you know make this lower stuff uh, sound louder. I also added a cool bit of distortion with this. Uh, I just recently finally bought the uh, the Sound Toys bundle, and I'm so fucking happy because these plugins are everything. And um, they finally they finally went on sale this year. Um, this this distortion plugin i just love the way it mangles shit um so for for like the hype ad libs <clears throat> if i'm ha if i have a track that's that's like pianos and bells like i don't know I, I really like i really like nasty grungy distortion i came up with this can you smell it Can you smell it? Whew. Can you smell it? Now, like that obnoxious bleed from the headphones. If you know, if 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 you were doing something um, where you really wanted to impress people, and um, you know, kind of this again, Arvox, awesome plugin. It has a gate on this side, so you can just put this in not use the compressor and just gate um that sound can you smell it Whew. can you smell it Whew. can you smell it So onto the compression that is on the hook bus. I used the uh, this the soft tube emulation of the um, I think it's the LA two A compressor. I never used a real one. Um, I just I just like it because it's simple and straightforward. Again, it's another it's another compressor that doesn't have an attack or a release time to worry about. You just kind of hit this peak reduction knob until you find something you like. Um, you know, because I'm not, uh, you know, honestly, I'm not a uh, a compression genius. You know, I I, I tend I tend to stick with these. And um, you know the stock compressor because I understand them, and I think that's another that's another important thing with um, with mixing is you know just because you see like um, you might watch like a uh, like a famous mixers tutorials or a not so famous mixers tutorials, but a famous tutorial um, maker tutorials. If you guys can kind of pick up on who I'm talking about, and you might see. A plugin that they use and be like man that's what I need to make my vocals sound right but if you if, if you don't have a if you don't have a um a real grasp on what that thing does you're just going to um you're just gonna mess up your sound so I understand how this works so that's why I use it it's not it's not because um you know I used to use a, a real one in the studio and I love the flavor of the sound no I just I just I know how it works, so I use it. Um, so here's here's what we have with comp with with compression. Whew. 
Cause your money, that's a hell of a cologne Can you smell it? When I step out, all the bitches smell it on oh, me Cause your money, that's a hell of a cologne Can you smell it? Walk into the spot, your bitch, you smell it on oh, me Cause your money, that's a hell of a cologne Can you smell it? When I step out, all the bitches smell it on oh, me Cause your money, that's now you see, uh, you can tell how much you're compressing by this gain reduction right here. You see, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm only knocking, you know, maybe, maybe half a dB down. Again, because this vocal is so compressed already that if I start knocking off, you know, three, five dB, you're gonna get into, um, you know, a really weird distorted type of compression and. Um, it's not necessary um you know if this had more transient spikes or something maybe i would do that um and again this is this tutorial that i'm going through it's it's relevant to these vocals and this chain if you don't have these vocals in these this chain you can't just take screenshots of, of what i have here and you know uh use try to use these as presets and think that it's going to work this is just for this chain so um yeah i just uh, you know i just knocked some of that down turn you know turn the makeup gain a little bit more up and now we have something that sits way better in the mix Cause your money, that's a hell of a cologne Can you smell it? When I step out, all the bitches smell it on me Cause your money, that's a hell of a cologne Can you smell it? Walk into the spike Um I just wanted to add some more air to the vocals because they sounded um they didn't sound muffled but i just i i know from experience with this chain that you can e e even even on something that's um even like a vocal that's recorded this shittily you know that's it's not in a booth you can hear the bleed you can hear a kid in the background you can still you could still bring up a little bit of air you know, 60 be of air on this, and it's gonna wind up sounding a lot better than if you hadn't. Cush your money, that's a hell of a cologne. Can you smell it? When I step out, all the bitches smell it on me. Cush your money, that's a hell of a cologne. Can you smell it? Walk into the spot, your bitch, you smell it on me. Cush your money, that's a hell of a cologne. Can you smell it? When I step out, all the bitches smell it on me. Cush your money, that's a hell of a cologne. Walk into the spot, your bitch, you smell it on me. Now, at this point, you. you that's that's it that's all that's all i've pretty much done with this uh with this vocal uh for the hook part with the exception of putting a ping pong delay on the uh on the ad lib section that's it there's no you know there's the, there's no magical fucking you know vocal exciter that needs to go on this shit and it's because it's recorded through you know through a decent mic not the best mic in the world you know it's not a whatever the hell you think is the best mic in the world it's it's a it's it's a it's a decent serviceable compression mic or condenser mic recorded on a decent serviceable preamp that gets you a decent vocal and when you get a decent vocal you don't have to do a bunch of crap to it in order to get it to stick out in the mix you know if you're just plugging any mic into the back of any audio interface that's where you run it that's where you run into problems where it's hard to get stuff loud and thick um so the only other thing um that i would note about this uh let's see we had the clap what did i do oh that's that's what happened where is it Yeah, there it goes. All right, so before the vocal, this is before I dropped the vocal in in the uh, in the hook. This is what the piano sounded like. Cush your money, that's a hell of a cologne. Can you smell it? When I step out, all the bitches smell it on me. Cush your money, that's a hell. So I'm so I'm liking the way the vocal sounds. The vocals up front. 
it's in my face it's clear but the piano is just it's buried and um the piano was high on my list of things that i wanted to be heard because the melody you know it, it's it, it has an emotion to it and that emotion is an important part of the beat because it plays such a strict contrast for when for when the trap synth comes in. Um, and it kind of it, it makes what he's saying on the chorus a lot more uh, a lot more epic and poignant because um, this was actually this was actually a, a song that was on a completely different beat. Um, you know, it was it was a, it was an industry beat, actually. And I just I made this beat around his vocal. Um, so that piano was a big, was a big deal for me. Uh, and in order to get it to come out, what I wound up doing first was I'm looking, I'm looking at my spectrum meter. We got 13.8. We'll bring that back down. I'm looking at, I'm looking at my spectrum analyzer and I'm trying to find the, uh, the important part of the sound that I want. Because this piano, when you listen to a solo, I've got chords, all right, 941, I've got chords and I've got a top melody, right? And what I want to do is I want to bring, I want to bring that top melody out. So I'm going around trying to find it. Those are my chords back there. I don't want to. I don't want to bring my chords up. I'm looking for the top melody. I'm realizing it's in the higher octave. Higher octave means higher frequency. So I go. I you know I go around here. All right. Instantly, instantly you can hear it even more. Um, once you find it and and you raise it up. An instrument that's uh, that's being uh, just kind of killed by the vocal. As, as as soon as you bring it up a little bit, you want to go back into the context of the mix and and make sure you know make sure you're not messing up any other relationships. So you can you could kind of hear it a little bit more. But um, I'm listening to it and I'm thinking and I'm like, man, I want more clarity. What do I do to get more clarity? OK, what you don't do to get more clarity is to put a fucking exciter on it or to put, you know, some crazy type of, you know, rock my piano preset from some compressor or some shit. What you do is you go into EQ and it, it just a regular simple stock EQ will work, man. And you, you just take you just take your high frequency and you just, you know, you. You raise it up, you raise it up a little bit. You give it some air, you know, and then you listen to what you got. Now that works. You can hear the piano now. Um, the reason why that works is because this part doesn't have like an aggressive hi hat and um, a whole bunch of stuff in the super high register, um, you know, from uh, say from seven hertz to you know twenty thousand. That's gonna compete for that space. So since so since I know there isn't a lot of stuff here that lets me be able to to make this really obnoxious twelve dB boost to the highs and have have the highs of the piano really ring out against the chorus so back to the you know back to the strange visualization what i'm hearing is you know i'm i'm pushing i'm pushing i'm pushing the the highs of the piano and the melody side of the piano kind of kind of up over you know up and over um up and over fool's voice i have i have the chords that are that are they're sitting behind him now so he's kind of he's kind of in a space in between the piano the symbols the symbols are up high in the track 
and the base the base is where it's supposed to be it's it, it's at a place where it's you know it's audible but it's just still providing just the foundation for him and um I can always tell, you know, you can always tell when your bass is too loud is when it starts to, uh, it starts to come up too high in the track. Like I, 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 I can't, I can see the music almost like a computer screen, you know, and, and you have that much space to go, you know, to go from bass up into your high frequencies. Um, if, you know, if you, if you could kind of follow along with that visualization and if, 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 if the bass shouldn't get any higher than, you know, a quarter of the screen, even on the most obnoxious tracks. Um, so, yeah, if that makes any sense, if it doesn't, um, I don't know. It's weird. The the verse section um, didn't really have that many challenges because it's, it's just the 808 and the synth. And when you have that, it's pretty easy to, uh, you know, to get a verse to sound good and it's pretty much just the same thing um the same exact you know Arvox on the on the lead i've got um i've got him pan left to right on his ad lib track and then he's got this one in the middle which i did the same the same devil loke um distortion to kind of give everything the same flavor you could see that you could see that this that this um this verse right here you know there's there's parts where he gets a little bit lower and then comes up higher and a little bit lower so i went a little bit more, so i went a little bit more aggressive with the compression to kind of even out the sound cushion blue and as you know i got it all when i step in the spot you know they know me so you see at the loudest parts of this vocal you know then i start jumping into knock it down you know three almost four db that's what i meant with more aggressive with the compression so that, that way these points were turned down low enough to kind of be level with the lowest points in in this lead vocal because it's it's not stacked um as you know as you might be able to notice already you don't have to do i mean i know there's a sound on sound article and it says that you know eminem does i think something like six layers of his lead vocal and you know that that's one technique and it does sound really awesome but you can get you can get a thick vocal just by compressing a single track you know you don't have to do these crazy um you know performances where where you're stacking your voice a gajillion times you know so if you get a session back like this from a rapper you know don't freak out don't go back and make him you know stack his stuff just you know just squash it man cushion blue honey you know i got it all when i step in the spot you know they know me cushion money that's a hell of a cologne I ain't gotta front you other niggas phony Roll my blunt, I smoke a solo, leave me alone I don't need no motherfucking friends or homies Do a solo, what you niggas really own Watch me stack this paper, count these fucking hundreds you know, and that's and that's really all there is as far as uh, as far as the processing to the vocal. Again, it's just you know a little compression on the bus, a little add a little air to the EQ, and most of it is is really just balance work with the faders. You know, um, taking care of your bass. And, you know, if you're having trouble, if if no matter what you do to a vocal, you're having trouble 
understanding it and it's getting drowned out by the beat, try turning the bass fader down and see how much more room you have to work with the vocal. Um, the other, th the, the, the main challenge I had with this, um, with this, uh, with this guy here was just making sure I could hear the synth and, um, all I had to do was just turn the gain up. Honey, you know I got it all. Oh me, cushion money, that's a hell of a cologne. I ain't gotta front you other niggas phony. Roll my blunt, I smoke a solo, leave me alone. I don't need So yeah, I don't I, I, I don't know if that's um I don't know if that's uh, disappointing to you guys to, uh, you know, to see a session with a vocal like that that you can actually hear that's, you know, crisp and even though it's recorded in the guy's, uh, you know, um, dining room in a hood ass apartment. Um, I just want to kind of illustrate that. If you have, if you have a chain, if you, you know, if you have a decent signal chain, getting it, getting a, uh, a quality vocal sound is extremely easy and you can do it without a shitload of plugins. And if your response to that is, well, what happens if I don't have a, you know, a decent signal chain, my response is get one simply get one because you can't you, you can't be serious about um you can't be serious about about wanting to be an artist and uh make quality music and either not pay to use somebody's signal chain or buy your own it's just it's it's just that simple if if you're if your dedication to to making good music stops at spending money then please don't waste anybody's time asking them how to make something sound good like straight up because it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter what what program you use. Like, okay, Pro Tools is the industry standard. It's what everybody records on. Fantastic. But did you know that the industry standard Pro Tools is not the you know the software that you're getting off the you you know off the uh, their Creative Cloud system? But it's a it, it's a system of uh it's like a rig. Like you have to have an HD rig to to run the real version of pro tools and that costs money because it's an actual signal chain and then what they're plugging into that is you know is uh avalons and um you know and, and manly preamps and just these just these crazy things you look at a guitar center and you're like wow why is that box ten thousand dollars oh yeah because it makes hits you know um and the amazing thing is is that we live in a time where Th things like preamps and microphones the, th the the bargain ones you know even though like you know six hundred dollars doesn't sound like a bargain to somebody who who doesn't you know have a job and make money it's it, it is um because in order to in order to get to this level not long ago i mean you're talking about 15 16 years ago we were we were people who were at people who were at your level again were using this shit you know what I'm saying? It's not that long ago, 15, 16, 17 years ago. Okay, we were using this, getting hella static, making it happen. Now you guys, now you guys have DAWs, and all you have to do to have to have a studio quality type track is just go get the preamp and the mic. I can't I can't say it anymore. Go get the preamp and the mic. There's no plugins that I'm going to show you that's going to be able to make some thin vocal that's only recorded through a through a budget recording inf interface sound like sound like a hit record. You're always going to be chasing chasing that sound. And then the other thing is is stop chasing the radio sound because the stuff that they're using 
is what's giving them that sound. You know what I'm saying? It's it, people still don't understand. It's not the software. It's not the plugin. It's the chain coming in. That is the most important part of the process. I'm going to say it again. The most important part of the process is the chain coming in. Everybody has the same plugins. All you assholes that are that are cracking, you know, all the wave stuff. You guys all got it, right? You got you got all the plugins on your computer and you still can't make the stuff sound good. It's because you don't have the chain coming in because you can't hack that. You can't crack that. You have to actually go out and work for it and earn it. And that's what's separating your sound from the professional sound. There's still there's still that gate. So, you know, what I'm saying like I'm not trying to be, you know, hard on people that people that, you know, use crack plugins and stuff like that you know do do whatever you want to do but don't continue you know to ask to ask people like yo how do i get my vocal to sound like you know to you know to sound like you know to sound like travis scott and you know and kanye and stuff like that when you're not willing to either a go out and pay for the studio time to use their signal chain or b make sure that you have your own so like i always say Keep it simple, as you can see. This the, it, getting a vocal to sit and mix is very simple. Just don't be basic. Get a signal chain, and I'll see y'all on the next one.